right, well, what we got here is we're going to go through some examples um, of trig substitution. This is a very, one of the more complex um, calculus um, integration procedures. So um, what we're going to go through is we're going to go through three of the different ones. This is the first of three um, of the very common trig substitution problems. Um, what we got here is we're going to go through and talk about how to use tree substitution when you have an equation like this. All right. Um, generally, when you go through, there are several different ways that you're going to approach a problem. And when you first start, you, I always say you look for a basic uh, integral um, if you can do it. Um, if you don't have that, then you look for u substitution. That's the second basic one. Um, usually, u substitution, I would take the bottom, take the derivative of that, and you see that that doesn't work out. If you don't have that, you multiply two, by two values, you try um, parts. If that doesn't work out, then you try partial fractions if you have a denominator, which we do here. Um, but we don't have linear or quadratic factors. So the last resort is generally when you have a square root in the bottom. And you notice that you have two perfect squares. So the difference of squares um, right here is you have 4x squared minus 49. This is where you probably want to try trigonometric substitution. All right, so that's what we're going to do right here. And like I said, is when you have a square root, and you notice that you have the difference of two squares. So you, here I have 4x squared minus 49 which we call u squared minus a squared. Now, with this, where you have a u, your variable squared, or variable term squared, minus your um, coefficient or your constant squared, um, we're going to use, in our trigonometric substitution, we're going to take and use secant, all right, secant. Now, with secant, what we recall is that secant is the ratio of hypotenuse, and that's going to be our u, our variable, and um, adjacent leg, which is going to be our A. By using Pythagorean theorem, all right, if we have this is U and this is A, we're going to have the square root of U squared minus A squared. Use Pythagorean theorem to solve that. Another thing you probably want to remember is that secant comes from the trig identity, all right, is in the trig identity, tangent squared theta plus 1 equals secant squared theta. All right, so without further ado, the first thing we're going to do is when we set this up, we have to set up our triangle, okay, our triangle. And what, since we realize that it's in this form, all right, the x minus the uh, a, um, I'm going to set up a triangle right here. And I'm going to just draw that right there. Okay. So we're going to pick our u. Our u is our variable, so we're going to see what is u squared. Well, u squared is going to be 2x, right? Because 2x is going to be our u. Okay. And that's going to be our u. Our a value, I can just like this up here, 2x. All right. And yeah, that's, that's it. All right, and we'll have our a value. Our a value is going to equal, all right, whatever our constant is squared. So that's going to be step. All right, from here, we can go over here and say, okay, what is this going to be? Well, that's going to be um, 44x squared, all right, because we take 2x squared minus 49, and that's going to be right there. Okay, so now let's set this up. We have secant. All right, secant of theta, and then I'm going to set this ratio. Secant is hypotenuse 2x over adjacent, which is 7. Okay. Now, from here, we're going to do a little bit of substitution. All right, substitution. So, um, the first thing is we have this variable right here we're going to have to substitute. And we also have um, the dx that we have to get rid of, because we're going to put all this in terms of theta. That's why we're using trig substitution. So, in this case... If I take this equation over here, and I'll put it in a different color, and I kind of break this up, I want to get rid of dx, all right? And this is actually the square root of, all right, 2x, that quantity squared. So if you didn't catch that in the beginning, that's where I got that, minus 49. All right, then if I go over here, I can actually rewrite this, and I can solve for 2x, so I have secant of theta times 7, that's going to equal 2x. All right, that's going to equal 2x. All right, t dighty. Um, so we got that. So I can actually substitute that in there then. And what we have then is, all right, um, 7. Let's write that right here. The integral. So we'll have the square root of 7 secant of theta, that quantity squared, minus 49. And now let's get rid of the dx. Because remember, there's a dx up here. All right, I can write that down. And we have a dx right there. Okay. 
So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to have to take the derivative because dx is a differential, so we're going to have to take the derivative. So I'm going to take the derivative of this with respect to theta. So when we do that, all right, um, what we're going to have is, well, I think it's going to be right here. We're going to have 7. It's going to turn into secant theta tangent theta. All right, and we'll just put d theta right there. And over here, we're going to have 2x, which would be 2 dx. 2 dx. And that's what we got. Now, I need to solve for dx, so I'm going to divide by 2. So we have 7 halves secant theta tangent theta d theta equals dx. All right? And this, that's what we have. So I can then replace that. So I'm going to have, I'm going to just put the 7 halves on the outside right away. All right? And then I have my secant theta and then I have my tangent theta right here, and that's going to be d theta. Okay, dokey. Now, from here, what we're going to do is now we're going to see if we can simplify this a little bit. Um, use a little substitution to help us out. So, what we have is I'm going to now go through here. I'm going to change color. I'm going to make this in green just so we don't. All right, so now I'm going to change green and now I'm going to start simplifying this so we can solve this integral. That's why we're doing all this stuff. So, I have seven halves here, and I have the integral here. Um, the top is going to remain the same. And the bottom, what we're going to have to do is we're going to solve that. So we have 49 secant squared, all right, theta, minus 49. And then we can take the square root. Well, if you notice right here, what we can do is I can factor out that 49. If I factor out that 49, I'm going to erase this right here. All right, so I'm going to factor out the 49. Uh, just to show you the work. All right, I'm going to factor out the 49. And so we then have the square root of 49. That's going to be times the secant squared of theta minus 1. All right, and obviously that's all going to be over the secant all right, of theta, tangent of theta, d theta, and so on and so forth. Well, when we have this, this is going to then turn into 7. All right, that's going to turn to 7. So I'm going to factor out, so then we have 7 on the outside. All right, so we factor this, and then I'm going to save room. So we have the 7 on the outside. And what we then have is secant squared of theta minus 1, and then we're going to have this times 7. Well, we're going to simplify this a little farther. We notice that we can cancel out the 7s right here. We also know that this right here, the square root of secant squared minus 1, that actually, what we can do is, if I subtract 1 over here, I actually have the tangent, and then take the square root of tangent of theta, actually equals secant squared theta minus 1, and that square root. So I'm going to then change this right here, into tangent of theta. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. All right, see, there's a lot of different moving parts in here, which makes this a little bit more complicated, but we can do it. I believe in us. All right, so simplifying all of this, I'm going to have one half then left over, which I cancel these sevens. I have the integral, and now I have a tangent here. Well, once again, if you realize, these tangents then can cancel out. And so what we're left with then is in the numerator, I'm left with secant of theta d theta. All right. Now, for those that you may not know, we can then find the integral of secant. Now, this is, and this is, we should know this, all right, is that this is the integral, all right, and we proved this in a previous slide. The integral of secant is the natural log of secant theta plus tangent theta. We have that right there. And don't forget our C, and that's what we have. Now, we are not done yet, because now we have to do a little bit of substitution and figure all this stuff out. All right? If you recall, we have this little triangle up here. And we're going to put is all of these thetas back into x's. All of these thetas back into x's. So if you come up here, you can realize that secant of theta is 2x over 7. So I'm going to replace secant of theta with 2x over 7. So I have 1 half natural log of secant of theta, which is 2x over 7, plus, now let's look at tangent. What is tangent? Tangent is toa opposite over adjacent. So that's going to be the square root of 4x squared minus 49 all over adjacent, all right, which is 7. 
We get that from our triangle that we use to rewrite this, and we go plus C. Now we have this written like so. If you took the derivative of this, guess what you would get? Right here, and we have our first, all right, solving of the trig integration using C. So, uh, yeah, a lot of substitution, a lot of moving parts here. However, the key thing is, is that identify if we have a square root, if you have the difference of two squares, all right, or you have the variable minus another constant a squared, you can create a triangle and use this secant trig substitution. Once you set the triangle going through, you have to get rid of the theta, fill in the missing parts. Eventually, you come to an integral that you can solve, and you go from there. And then remember your final substitution of getting rid of the thetas and putting them back in the backs. Well, I hope this helps you out, and uh, good luck and God bless in the rest of your problems.